Good evening my grade 11 COVID class. How are you doing on this fabulous day? Right, let's start with our next lesson. Before we will continue with lesson number 11, we are first going to mark denotation and connotation. So please do take out your language books where you did your answers for denotation and connotation. Right, your assignment was as follows. Use a dictionary to write the denotative meaning of each word and then write the connotative meaning of each word. Right, when we look at the word prayer, denotative, the D means dictionary meaning. It is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. What is my connotation that I adhere to the word prayer? Salvation and church are two ones, two of those. You might have something else as well. So those are not cast in stone, okay? I'm just giving you two examples of connotation which is attached to that. Football. The dictionary or denotative meaning is a game involving kicking and handling of a ball. For example, soccer, rugby, American football. What connotation do I conjure up when I think of football? I think of fun, sport, exercise. Cake tin. The dictionary or denotative meaning for cake tin is an airtight container used for storing cakes or it could be a deep flat bottomed container used for baking cakes. The connotative meaning, thinking of a cake tin, I think of pleasure, spoiled, cookies, treats and so forth. Industry. The denotative meaning it is an economic activity concerned with the processing of raw materials and manufacturing of goods in factories. What connotative meaning do I adhere to the word industry? The economy and jobs. A taxi. Dictionary or denotative meaning? A motor vehicle licensed to transport passengers in return for a payment of a fare. Connotative, I think of taxi, it conjures up ideas of traveling, transport maybe, a mode of transport. Maybe the word yellow, also if you think of the yellow cabs in America. What do I think of a rose? Dictionary description, a prickly bush or shrub that bears colorful fragrant flowers lots of ornamental petals. The connotative meaning of a rose is love, scent, perfume, anything that you have in that regard. Right, then the second one, colors that often have connotations. Write down the connotations of yellow, green, blue, red and gold. Right, yellow. When I think of yellow, I think of warmth or the sun. Green conjures up ideas of jealousy, maybe nature. Blue, cold, water, calmness. Red conjures up the con connotative idea of love, blood, passion and fire. Gold, when I think of gold, I think of wealth, money, jewelry, maybe the sun. Okay, and then number three, the question at number three was, write down which word has a positive or negative connotation in each of those. Right, skinny. When I think of skinny, it evokes a negative feeling maybe. Laughing, positive, strict, negative. No one likes to be strict or to have strict rules. Politicians, they are also conjuring up negative feelings. Teacher, positive, and cupcake, positive. Right, that was now denotation and connotation. 
Then your next set of answers is for your dictionary assignment, which you did last Friday. Right, the first question was where you had to look up the following words in the dictionary and the first letters were given to you. That which is accepted by the majority as right or fitting is orthodox. Old-fashioned literature before the flood is antediluvian. The one before the second last is anti penultimate. What that which happens by chance is fortuitous. Not having a partisan or a bias involvement in something, then it's a disinvolvement. Monstrous wickedness is called an enormity. Wishing someone well, you are beneficial. Okay? Then a very small blunder or folly is a peculiarity and done with evil intention is malicious. Right, then the next lot, from which language is the word nutrient derived from the, word, the Latin language? Then the word nourish is derived from Latin but came into use in English during medieval times when Middle English borrowed it from the old French word norer. Is that true or false? The answer is true. And then the last one, use the word nourish in a sentence so that its figurative meaning becomes clear. Figurative um, that part I misread, but I gave you a sentence so that it will come clear. The soup will nourish your body after you have been so ill. I will get back to you on the figurative one. Goodness, this lockdown is getting to all of us. <laughs> right, the next one is abbreviations. This is our next lesson. Lesson 11 for the 19th of May. Now abbreviations, um, there's lists and lists of abbreviations, okay? They are a shortened form of a word or a phrase that is used to save time. Now what must I know about abbreviations? There are just a few things that you must take note of. First of all, an abbreviation is not pronounced as it is written. I don't say MR, I pronounce it Mr. Okay? Not MR, MR Kutsia. Mr. Kutsia. An abbreviation usually ends in a full stop, like professor, president, etc. But if the abbreviation ends in the last letter of the word, then the full stop is left out. Now, what do we mean by that? When I say the word doctor, it starts with a D, but it ends with a R. My abbreviation is D-R. When it ends with the last letter of the word, it does not get an abbreviation. Okay. You do not put one there. Mr. M-R. There's my R. It ends with the last letter of the word. Mistress. M-S. There's my S. Road. There's my road. Does not get a full stop. Right. Then in the modern usage of the word, as we use it nowadays, if the initial or the first letter of the words are used, like United States of America, USA, we do not use a full stop. Okay, if the first letter of each word is used, South African Airways, SAA, you don't need to put a full stop after SAA. Okay, Cable News Network, CNN. Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, SPCA. 
Right, now what is an acronym and an initialism? These words you have heard before and it is very important that you note what the difference is. When I use the initials of this word, okay, as I would make an abbreviation as a word, it is called an acronym. AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, okay, I use the initials of the words, the first word, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, the first letter of each word. But I say it as a word. I speak of AIDS. Okay, not A-I-D-S. I use it as a word AIDS. Then it is called an acronym when you say it as a word. NASA. Okay. UNICEF. SCUBA. UNESCO. We use these as a word. And therefore it is called an acronym. Now when I use this um, abbreviation and I say each letter individually, then it is called an initialism because I use the first or the initial letter, first letter of every word and I pronounce it. Abbreviations which are pronounced one letter at a time are called initialisms, like ANC, African National Congress, okay, but I say every letter, ANC, FBI, World Health Organization, okay, WHO, DVD, USA, SPCA, I say every letter S P C A S A B C then it's an initialism whereas in the previous case I said it as a word AIDS I did not say A I D S I said it as a word therefore it's an acronym when I say each letter by itself then it's an initialism. And please note, they do not have full stops. Then we also have another feature, which you might not have heard or come across, which we call clippings. Clippings are when we use a part of the full word. For example, instead of saying, go and put the milk in the refrigerator, your mum will say, go and put the milk in the fridge. Therefore, I clip the word. Okay, I cut off half of it. And therefore, it is called a clipping. Then another feature of words, which is also basically part of abbreviations, are also part of dictionary work, because you find abbreviations in the dictionary is an, a feature which we call blending or a portmanteau. Now in the olden days the ladies had this huge bag and they called it a portmanteau. And we think of it as a portmanteau where I throw words together to form a new word. Okay, um, that word maybe did not exist before but now because of certain things, new television programs, new features, new science inventions, these words now pop up on the scene. They are newly formed words and they share the same meaning as the original word. Bromance, okay? Rom-com, romantic comedies are called rom-coms. Sitcoms, advertisements animatronics, robotics, a staycation, brunch, frenemies, emoticon, docudrama and smog. Those are but a few where the characteristics of each word 
comes to the front, but I throw the two together to form a new word or a new idea. Right, I'm sure that you will be able to come up with one or two of your own, which I could not think of. So you are more than welcome to add on if you can find or think of something. Right, now these notes, I'm sure when the school starts I will be able to give to you. These are a few abbreviations that um, I will also take photos of and I will post with your CI member so that you will be able to get hold of them. And here are a few more. Okay. These are just a few of the most frequently used abbreviations. As you watch television nowadays with the COVID-19 experience, um, you will come across a lot of abbreviations. I think it would be safe for you to also take note of some of those um, acronyms and abbreviations and initialisms and see that you know what they stand for and what they mean as it is something that is happening now and they might ask that of you in your coming exams or your matric exam. Right, your assignment for your abbreviations. First of all, indicate which of the following abbreviations or acronyms and which are clippings. Okay. ID, SIM, as in SIM card, PIN, cell, phone, flu, T's and C's, SMS, email, exam, and COSATU. Which one is an acronym and which one is a clipping? Then number two, refer to the notes Number eight, which is this one, on portmanteau, number eight. I want you to go and look at these words that I gave you as an example and indicate from which words those are blended or a portmanteau is made of. Okay. Then number three, write the following abbreviations in full. Become. PhD, PO Box, RSVP, VAT, CA, LT, CEO, KG, CM, ML, MG, AM, PM, BNB, and PTO. Those are the ones that I would like for you to finish for homework. Right, you must have fun. I do believe that you do not have a bored moment at hand and therefore I will say cheerio from the COVID-19 classroom. Have fun this week. Till next time. Cheerio bye.